everybody, and welcome to Living in the Word. We're so happy that you tuned in with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All, all is well? All is well. Absolutely. All is well, and we're just so thankful again that you all tuned in with us this morning. Before we get started in our, in our very robust discussion, you know how we do. We have to do the commercials first. So on Wednesday, remember that Wednesday is our Word Wednesdays, and we begin our Word Wednesdays around 5.30 with our prayer line. Prayer line is 351-999-3535, uh, where Pastor Will, Sister Gwen, and all of your church family, they're open to prayer on that line. If you call in just a little bit ahead of time, if you have a special need, and to let everybody know, and everybody's going to join in and pray with you on your topic. Also, after the prayer line, if you are in the city and you'd like to drop by or you'd like to just join us online, you still can do that. We have Bible study with Assistant Pastor Combs Hogan in the sanctuary. That's at 6, and immediately after that at 7, you'll have our books of the Bible study. Well, right now, we're still studying, I believe it is Exodus, mm -hmm. with Minister Cole. So that is our Wednesday. And, you know, we got worship room on Thursdays. Oh, and worship the worship room on Thursdays at 7. At 7. So 7 uh, on Thursdays, the worship room at 7. So we have a lot of word going forth here at Nineveh Missionary Baptist Church, and we are welcoming you to come and join with us. We also have some announcements from Brother Deacon Brian. That was, That's, that was last week. That was, that was last, last week. Last okay. Week. So any any other announcements? Well, you know, I, I, I didn't hear you say um, it's 9 o'clock now. Church starts at 10. <laughs> Church starts at 10, yeah. and we are in the sanctuary. So, in yes, the sanctuary. You, you can continue to join us online, but we'd love to see you in the sanctuary at Nineveh. Now, let's get started in the Word, because I don't want to take away from our time on this wonderful topic, and we are still talking about the reset. We're talking about the reset. Yeah. What reset definition is in dictionary.com is to set, adjust, or fix in a new or different way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And every culture, every society has different ways of cleaning the slate mm -hmm. and starting their new year. Some have a lot of rituals. I, re I read about one country in Europe where they literally bring all the old furniture mm -hmm. and throw it out. Oh, wow. Symbolic of a new beginning. Uh, well, if you can afford it. <laughs> yeah. 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 It may be a little bit ambitious yeah. with that yeah. one, but it's, it's part of their culture. Uh, some people look at it as a hygiene thing, where they thoroughly cleanse their homes. Uh, some people do the same thing physically with their bodies. They, they fast, and, you know, of course, fasting has both spiritual and physical benefits. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of ways that people start their New Year's journaling, making plans, mm -hmm. uh, resolutions, uh, just to press that reset yes. and say, it's time to forget what I did in the past mm -hmm. and look forward to new beginnings. Yes. And that's what we've been discussing. Amen. Um, I just wish that it was easy. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I know we've talked about that, that um, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Mm -hmm. But I do know that it's worth it. Absolutely. I, I, know, I know that to clean, a clean slate is a, good, is a good slate a lot of times. Sometimes we need to clean up relationships. Yes. You know, sometimes we need to go and ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to say, okay... I did not. I did this last year. Um, I'm, I don't want to do this this year. So you need to reset the way that you think. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and um, sometimes, you know, I, I, you know, one of the things that I always think about is how do you view change? Yeah. You know, a lot of people say I love change. Mm -hmm. Who people? Yeah, I'm about to say, but in reality, <laughs> most people really don't love change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let, let me make one point about change real quick mm -hmm. as you move on, Deacon Brian. Change is inevitable. Mm -hmm. Yes. But growth is not. Right. Mm -hmm. Growth is not automatic. Mm -hmm. You know, when I drive down First Avenue, if I drive from 6th to 7th Street to downtown, 
I see major changes. Major. Yeah. I see new buildings. You know, I see roadways and I see the streetscape has changed. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. right? So change is inevitable in every arena of life. Mm -hmm. But growth is a choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. that's, that's deep Very stuff good. right there. Yeah. 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 And so we're talking about, and I think Vanessa did an excellent job uh, in our kickoff session of things that we must practically do mm. to grow. We're talking about growth and, you know, like Paul said, he says, my ultimate goal is to become more like Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think that has to be our priority. I believe that God wants to bless us with material prosperity. Mm -hmm. I believe that he wants us to enjoy success. He said he delights in the prosperity of his servants. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to really put that in context, it's all connected to our spiritual centeredness. Is Christ on the throne or is Pastor Will Goodman on the throne? And I want to add to that. I heard Marcus Cosby, who's a, a fairly popular preacher, say this. He said, um, healthy things grow and they grow fast. Mm. What I want to add to that is so does cancer. Mm. And so sometimes we think that something is growing or is it, the shape is changing yes. and we got to do a health checkup to see is what's growing, is it healthy growth or is it detrimental growth? Mm. Um, because sometimes if we don't, we don't check in, we'll be like, oh, everything's good, you know, we're fine. And what's growing is something that's killing you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Every now and then you go to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. Get a checkup or um, just do it a, a personal evaluation. The other part is, um, the other question that I have for, for us is, how do we view doing the hard things? Uh -huh. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of people, I, I really hate it that um, in a lot of Christian circles, it's been sold that, that Christianity is just a bippity boppity boo, uh -huh. or wave of one, Easy believism. E easy, yeah, easy believism. And it it dismisses us from reality. Mm -hmm. it does. Yeah, no, no I've, I've had it. I've had it where the Lord changed something in an instance for mm -hmm. me. But most of the time, God, you know, the, this whole thing of life is about you learning about growth. Mm -hmm. It's about you learning mm -hmm. who you are and who you are in Christ. And the only way that most of the time God will show you is through heartache and pain and trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, but I, I really do hate that that um, because it one of the one of the, the ugliest things that I can that I've seen is a lazy Christian. Hmm. Well, you know what the Apostle Paul said to the Corinthian church. He says, "I die daily." daily. Yeah. So that means every day, it's by my volition mm -hmm. that I choose to pick up my cross, mm -hmm. Mr. Cole, mm -hmm. and mortify mm -hmm. my natural or my carnal members. Mm -hmm. That's not easy. Yeah. You know, and I think that one of the things that we can do to weaken Christianity is start to preach a crossless gospel. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, the gospel is not user friendly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. The, 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 the gospel is really a bona fide call to discipleship. Yes. yes. And what is a disciple? It's a deep learner and a close follower. I, uh, oh, I'm oh. Good. Well, for the last 24 hours, I have been meditating because Avery had a conversation with her, her trainer, who's a friend, and he was he confided in her. He said, "Now look," he said, "I my wife kept herself till marriage." She prayed, she did all the right things, and all she wants out of life is to be a mom, and she can't get pregnant. And, and so he said, what's the point of being righteous? What's the point of being holy? She could, she could have been out there doing it because she's not going to be able to get it. And I think we've got to crucify the idea that if I do steps one, two, three, and we're going to put a list out there, but we've got to crucify that idea that if I just do one, two, three, I can manipulate God's hand. Mm. And because we're, we're about to give you some steps and some functionality, but I don't want you to think that if I go do all eight steps, everything's going to work out my way. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. get everything that yeah. I want. 
Well, here's the thing, one thing I think we have to clarify, especially in our current Christian culture, is I believe you can decree a thing and have it just like the Bible says, and I believe you can name it, claim it, grab it, grab it, however you want to put it. However, I do understand this, that the men such as Abraham and Joshua and Moses and all of those men who accomplished great feats mm -hmm. uh, in the Lord's stead, they did it because, first of all, they heard mm -hmm. the direction and the revelation mm -hmm. from God. You know, mm -hmm. you know, as I was, I was, I was, as I was sharing on Sunday, God orders mm -hmm. our steps. He does. You know, and so, and some things in this life. And I know this is a little deep for some of our babes, but some things in this life we may never understand because yep. when Paul was talking about dying daily, you remember he had did a resume on all the insults, mm -hmm. how he was abused, mm -hmm. how he came close to dying. He went through all of that ill treatment, but yet he said, hey, I'm in the will of God, mm -hmm. guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And today, I mean, a lot of, based on a lot of our teaching, we would think, man, Paul's a lunatic. Yeah. You know, what? You know why he's not living in this or driving this, mm -hmm. you Educated. Know? Yeah, uh -huh. educated. He's sitting on the Sanhedrin. Power. Power, uh -huh. yes. Yeah. The will of God is not comfortable, but it's safe. Mm -hmm. And so if the, I think we think of safety and comfort as if they go well, but I think we have to think of it like with, if I'm with my parents and I'm a five-year-old. Yeah. And my dad grabs my hand and holds it real tight because he sees that there's a car coming. Mm -hmm. we, with my dad holding my hand, my hand hurts. Yeah. It's not comfortable. But I'm safe because yes. my dad is protecting me. Mm -hmm. And I know that if I'm with him, I'm going to be okay. Yes. The will of God is not your mansion. And you, know, we, you can get all these things because God knows I want a big house and some nice cars. Yes. But it is not this safe, cloud-protected world where everything's perfect. Yes. It's, a, it's the safety of knowing that you're not going to get picked off by Satan. Yes. I'm going to share a quote. Uh, I'm trying to think of the first black mayor of Atlanta. Um, Daly? No, that was... Mm -hmm. I, I think it was, I think it was uh, Jackson. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. That was Maynard Jackson, and here's what he said, because this was back during the time that racism was very strong, or, or should I say, it was, it, was, it was more animated than it is now. It's more sophisticated now. But they were asking him, you know, in this position, how safe do you feel? You know, there's a threat against your life. Here's what he said. The safest place in the world is in the world of God. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I deal with what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. We're safe when we're in His way. And you know, our goal, our goal is to reset. But first of all, if we don't, if our goal is to reset with our relationship with God, mm -hmm. and have you know, have a have a be in a good place with God. And I, I look as God as, my, as, as I would my father. Mm -hmm. I want my, I want to be in my father's will. Yes, you know, I want him to be happy with me. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And, and and that's our very first goal. Period. Yes. Past anything else, because if I'm happy with, if he's happy with me, everything else is gonna come. Yes. You know. And if it doesn't, I'm still in that relationship of love. Um, the third question that I want before before we get into it is, and, and this is what we're going to be talking about in our list. I've already mentioned it. Is how do you view goals? You know, do we do we do we set our own? Do we set goals? Personal goals? Um, you know, you know. At the beginning of the year, you say I want to have this amount of money in the bank. Um, I want to, you know, go on trips. You know, me and Vanessa and I are, are planning a trip of a lifetime. And how long have we been planning it, baby? 
A lifetime. For a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> We've been planning, you know, people talk about us all the time. They say, y'all are always traveling. And praise God. But, you know, we're always <laughs> going somewhere. But they don't know that we might plan one trip a year and a half in advance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and pay on it and pay on it and everything else because mm -hmm. we set goals for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, yes. I was just going to, I was going to uh, ditto and, and, and um, I guess, piggyback off of mm -hmm. that. One of my jobs that I kind of fell into is consulting. Mm -hmm. And so I consult churches, I get to consult businesses because people just, you know, want to ask me for advice. One thing that I found mm -hmm. is that if you make goals without putting systems in place, mm -hmm. your goals are just noise. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we can sit and write the goals out. This year I'm going to lose 100 pounds. What system mm -hmm. am I putting in place so that I, I you know, what? For, for me, um, like in the morning, I plan on going swimming. This morning, it failed. The alarm went off at 5. I know it went off at 4.50, it went off at 5. And I looked at it and I rolled over. So tonight, the system I'm going to put in place, I'm going to put the swim trunks by the bed. <laughs> I'm going to put the shoes right there. I'm not going to have to think about the breakfast. It's going it's to be all prepared so that I don't have an excuse as not to go. If you, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Amen. Y'all ready for the list? Let's Absolutely. do it. Let's get started. Okay. Okay. Here's our list. Number one, we we talked about this, and this is recent. Now, here, here's what here's what I want everybody to think about, is that in order to reset, we need to know what we're going to reset. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there are so many different ways that um, that things that we probably need to reset. I don't want you to think that you're going to just reset your whole life in one swoop. Okay, because you might have to reset your finances, you reset your um, relationship with God, you might have to reset your relationship with your wife, you might have to reset your relationship with your kids. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of different facets in life. And yes. so, so the first thing that, that, that we got on our list is meditate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the examples that, 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 I, that I, I wanted to want to use in order to nail down kind of what meditation is and this this is a big view of meditation and we, we talked about this before um, um, uh, camera um, a few sessions ago is that I want you to think about this now um, I'm a paramedic and um, I went to school for two years to become a paramedic and in that two years I got, I had one book, it was one thick book, but we went through that book for two years. And when you talked to me when I was in medical school, we, all we talked about was band-aids and IVs and EKGs, <laughs> you know, for that year. I would love for you to show up if I ever got injured. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's amazing, though, all that training that you and all that study and all those um, rotations that you do in the hospital and then the experience of actually being a medic is, um, is, is, is very rewarding. Mm -hmm. But for two years, mm -hmm. that's all we did because it was intense. You were in school and then you would have to do 370 hours that semester. You already had a full-time job, you know, and um, this next semester you got 240 more hours that you had to think on everything from from birthing a child to um, a stab wound or whatever. But for two years, that was all that I two focused on. years. Yeah, I, I would get up in the morning and study. I would look and I would read definitions. I would prepare for tests. For two years, chewing every, on it, chewing on it, and uh -huh. chewing on it, and then I would get off my job and then go to another job for free <laughs> for <laughs> to eight, chew on it. Yeah, to <laughs> chew on it again, and um, that is a big view uh -huh. of what meditation is. In the book of Joshua, chapter one, if you go back to the original uh, language uh, where Josh, the Lord commands Joshua to meditate on the word. That word literally means to mutter. Mutter. And if you trace it back to its original root, mm -hmm. it had to do with the chap, the cow chewing the cud. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see a, a cow eating and all that, 
nasty stuff running down mm -hmm. his mouth. I kind of want to explain what happens. Mm -hmm. a, a cow actually has four stomachs. Mm -hmm. And so what he does is he chews the cud, he swallows it, it goes into the first stomach, he regurgitates it, mm -hmm. he chews on it again, mm -hmm. it goes into the second stomach mm -hmm. with all this nasty mm -hmm. stuff running mm -hmm. out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. He regurgitates it. He chews it and he ingests it and he regurgitates it until the fourth stomach where it found the fatness. Mm -hmm. And that's what God was saying we must do in his word. We must mutter it, we must chew on it, and chew on it, and chew on it until we ingest it and it, it gets down into our spirits. Because here's the thing about the Bible. You can be very knowledgeable of the Bible, mm -hmm. but it's just a mental ascent. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. I, I've heard people reciting First Timothy. You know, uh, I don't have the spirit. Second Timothy says, I don't have the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. But like you say, when somebody mm -hmm. pulls that Glock out, <laughs> <put it laughs> out <of the face, laughs> is that mental ascent that yep. I have, or is it really in your heart? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you, I think you can even take it a little bit further. You want some deeper revelation of God. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have to meditate. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I think we put a lot of emphasis on spirit, on remembering. I can remember, but until it is like a part of me, mm -hmm. until it, it is it is a part of my identity, you like, and, and Avery and I go back and forth all the time, and she asked me, she said, she said Cole, you really feel like you got joy? I said, yeah, I got joy. She was like, well, I noticed, I said, I, I was, I, but, how can I say this without betraying my trust of my wife? Maybe I don't see. Just to make it easy, make it easy. If if you chew on it all day, so you're washing the dishes and you're thinking about what your devotion was on. And then you're driving down the road and you're still thinking about that scripture your devotion was on. And then you're picking up the kids from school and you're still thinking about that, that the devotion. You begin to notice things you didn't notice on the first read. Absolutely. You begin, you begin to God, begin, he can then use you to show you because the more is in front of you, the more you're going to notice. And if you want to have a deeper experience in the word, if you can't just stop at reading. That's all. One of the greatest expositors of the scripture is Bishop T.T. Jakes. Yeah. And I heard him say, of course, I have so many great preachers that I love, uh, Bishop Noel Jones. I could just give you a whole list. But one of the things that Bishop Jake said is this. He said, if I can put myself in the text, mm -hmm. I can preach it. Mm -hmm. So, and what he meant by that is the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. He walks down to the well. Uh -huh. He stands there beside the woman and Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's how he preaches it. Mm -hmm. it, it it's become mm -hmm. a reality mm -hmm. in his heart, that experience. And so mm -hmm. he feels all the emotion, mm -hmm. uh, all the tension of the text. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, he has a great, great uh, oratory skill. Yeah. So uh, I just, but it goes back to what you said. You have to meditate mm -hmm. the word to get revelation. And I think we've got to even discuss the difference between Eastern meditation and Christian meditation. Uh, because, talk about you that. know, we're, all, we, we're you're out in the world and they're talking about being mindful and, and they're encouraging you to do yoga and you're trying to do these things. Yes. I want you to see this, and if you, don't, if you don't hear anything from me in 2023, hear this. When you do Eastern meditation, whether you are trying to be mindful or you are trying to do yoga, what you're doing is you're focusing on you. And that inward focus on you, you're going to come up short every time. Mm -hmm. it, it, every time. You, if you're, uh, I'm trying to pull it out of me. I am finite. I, I don't have everything that I need. Mm -hmm. And if you're reading self-help, a lot of times they're saying everything you need is in you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Christian meditation says I don't have everything. And so I'm going to focus on what God has shown me so that I can fill in the gaps of who I am. That's why Yoga was designed to make you feel docile. That's the whole goal, is to make, prepare the soul for death. Christian meditation is, is to energize the soul for life.
And so if we if we're gonna talk about med where, what's the difference because it's, they're they're vastly different, yes. you know we we want to be we talk about peace. Man, nah, I'm not gonna go down that. I'm not gonna go down there. But what I want you to understand is that you you can't pair the two because they're doing two different things. One is trying to make your soul die. The other is trying to energize it for life. And so if I'm gonna meditate on the word both day and night, it's giving me fuel so that I can fight the battle of life. If I'm, if I'm meditating in an Eastern vein, what it's doing is it's making me ignore that I'm under spiritual attack. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I got to read this one, so oh. I got to read You stepped into this. <laughs> <laughs> I got to read it because mm -hmm. this, is, this is what the Lord said to Joshua. All mm -hmm. right. Uh, give me just a second. And I just happened, you know, I bought this little Bible because I told Glenn I got to reset <laughs> I, I, I can't come here with all that paper and notes. Yeah. <laughs> so here's what he said. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but mm -hmm. you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful, watch this, to do all according that is written. Mm -hmm. Then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have not I commanded you? And here's what I really wanted to touch. Be strong and courageous. Yeah. So meditating on the word is to increase your strength mm -hmm. and your courage to be obedient to God. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. because we're, we're gonna, gonna find we're gonna face the Canaanites. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're coming. Yeah. They might not call themselves the Canaanites. This is an they interesting thing. God told them the land belongs to you. Mm -hmm. But when Moses sent out the scouts, there were still giants over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's like, wait a minute. Now, God, I thought you said, didn't he give me the title D? Yeah. yeah. He said, land was mine. Mine. Yeah. Who's these squatters over here? <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's, that's what comes with the, the meditation, is the authority, authority to tell those giants, this is my house. This is mine. I remember what, back when I lived in Auburn, and it's, I was sitting on my porch, and I was sitting, and, and these bees attacked me. And it made me so mad, and I had been studying my word on Dominion. <laughs> it made me so mad that I, I made a, a Facebook post about it. I said, this is my house. Y'all got to go. So I went and bought all this spray yeah. because I had made up in my mind this is my territory. You got to make up in your mind what can stay and what can go. And so when you meditate, it gives you the vigor and the courage and the ability to say, you got to get up out of here. Yeah, yeah, this spirit yeah. can't stay. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this mentality can't stay. It's holding me, it's held me back for far too long. Oh, yeah, so, that is that's so true. true. Yeah, you so know, true. And, and here's the thing. We have to put our foot on it. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that that means literally we must take the authority, mm -hmm. you know, the Gergesites, the, Gerges, Gerges, you know, the, Gergesites. the, Gergesites, <laughs> the Hittites, the Amorites, they weren't going to give up that territory that they had already mm -hmm. possessed. Yeah. But it no longer belonged to them. Mm -hmm. When God decreed it, he said the wealth of the wicked has been what? Transferred to the just. Yeah. When God decreed that it was his people's inheritance, mm -hmm. guess what? It was their land. It was yep. their land. But can, they had to go in and tread upon it. They had to drive the enemy out. Now, God told them, he says, you're not going to be able to drive them out all at once. Mm -hmm. He says, you're going to have to drive them out little by little. Yeah. And that's the way we've got to walk it out. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to even go here, and this is going to get political and deep at the same time. You look at the Middle East, mm -hmm. and the Palestinians are making this case that the Israelites need to be out mm -hmm. yes. in Israel. And so I want you to see this, that they have convinced world media mm -hmm. that Israel don't need to be in Israel, mm -hmm. yes. right? Mm -hmm. But over 6,000 years ago, God made a promise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the whole world is looking at Israel like, why are you treating these people? Because this the, is the same bad. mandate that was on them 2,000 years ago, I mean 4,000 years ago and 6,000 years ago still exists. Mm -hmm. That still applies to you too. Mm -hmm. yes. God gave you territory. He made promises to you. Some of us have not experienced our growth because we hadn't gotten up and taken it. Mm -hmm. God said that you were going to come into the land and you sitting here looking at the door, waiting on the door to come open. Yeah, like, Some doors you got to kick open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 
You know, I, I know we, we're kind of moving beyond the pandemic, but here's one of the things that, that I kind of learned about the pandemic, because some things that work together for good for the people of God work together for the detriment of the enemies of God. When, when Israel left Egypt, God says, okay, I'm going to send a strong east wind, right? That east wind cleared a path for the Israelites, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When they were in Goshen, God bring down all these plagues, but he had placed some type of covering over Goshen so his people were continuing to be blessed. Mm -hmm. But the same thing that was a blessing to the people of God was a curse, was a curse to the world. Because when the Israelites pursued the, the Egyptians pursuing the, the Israelites stepped into the Red Sea, guess what? They died. Mm -hmm. The waters receded. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of stuff that is happening today is happening because God is saying, okay, I'm ready to raise my church up. Uh -huh. I'm about to bless my people. Mm -hmm. But this is going to create such a shaking in the world that the world is going to recognize that I am God. Mm -hmm. You know, and there there are three things that 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 we're I, all off reset. Aren't we? Oh well, no, but I think this is real. This is relevant. We're right, yeah. we're right on reset and yeah. meditation. Um, there are three things that meditation accomplishes, and I, there might be more than those three things. But one thing that it does is gives you an understanding. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, and the next thing that that um, meditation does it, it it gives you direction. Yes. You know, you as you as you start studying and it becomes a part of you. Yes. Um, you you start getting direction from God. The other thing that it does is that it helps with your relationship with God. Yes. And, I, and here here's here's what I want to do. I, I actually want to do some practical stuff mm -hmm. with um with with reset mm -hmm. and with meditation. It says that um I, I'm looking for a scripture. Um, that that I can use as an example to to reset. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says that. Um, and I, I, let's just use Isaiah forty thirty one. Okay? okay, on meditation. Okay. Okay. I want you to think about this. I want I want us to meditate on this scripture. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Isaiah forty thirty one says, "But those who hope in the Lord, He will renew their strength." He says they'll they'll soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. Uh -huh. They will walk and not be faint. Uh -huh. Okay, y'all y'all familiar with that scripture? Yeah. It reads a little bit different in the King James Version. Right. But but I want you to think about just meditating on that scripture. Those who are hoping in the Lord, uh -huh. um, he says, now I'm talking about, I'm weak. Uh -huh. I'm tired. Uh -huh. You know, I've been working. People have been kicking me and everything else. And I start meditating on this scriptures. I hope in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So that, that's applying to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to meditate on this scripture until the Lord gives me breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Those that hope, I know that it's applied to me because I'm hoping in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I'm those. And he, he says he'll renew my strength. But I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I've been working this crazy job. I've been getting beat up. People have been taking advantage of me. I'm feeling kind of weak right now. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to keep on because he says, because those who hope in the Lord, he'll renew my, he'll renew their strength. So that's me. Mm -hmm. And I'm, 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 I'm thinking about all mm -hmm. the hope that I have in the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about who the Lord is. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord that made the earth, the Lord that, 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 that spoke and everything happened. He says he's going to renew my strength. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was a kid, and there is nothing like this, the, the um, energy <laughs> to get with it as a kid, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I remember as I got older and when I was a teenager, there's nothing like the strength mm -hmm. that you have when you're a teenager. Mm -hmm. And but but what he says, he says I'm not. Uh, he says I'm gonna renew your strength. Yeah. And so I'm thinking about it. I'm I'm chewing on it, just like he said. It's going down on stomach number one. I'm the one that hopes in the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm going to renew your strength. Mm -hmm. I'm chewing on it. I'm spinning back up, getting ready to go back down in the second one. And I'm thinking about it. I'm, I'm driving down the road. He will renew my strength. And he says, you know what? I'm feeling weak, 
But the Bible says that since I'm hoping in the Lord, that he says, I'm going to mount up on wings like eagles. And what that's telling me is that right now I'm downtrodden, mm -hmm. but I will be soaring like an eagle. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm meditating. I'm thinking Absolutely. of that scripture. Meditating. I'm I'm feeling weak, but all of a sudden I can start feeling my strength coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I can see myself mounting mounting up. I can see myself instead of them kicking me down, me standing up on top of the mountain, lifting somebody up. All of a sudden, from what I read, and then I got an understanding of it, the next thing it's not just words anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's yeah. something that I believe. Mm -hmm. And remember what I said last week? Or the week before last, he said that those things that you believe in change the way that you act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so here we go. He says, I'm going to be running and not be weary. So the Lord's going to give me extra strength. Pastor Will, he's going to give you extra strength. Mm -hmm. You know why? You know why? You know why? Because you hope in the Lord. Amen. He's going to give you the strength that you had when you were 13, 15, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, when, when you were the strongest that you've ever been. I He's going to renew that strength. And you just keep meditating on that word. And see, sometimes I know you feel weary. Sometimes I know you feel weak. But he says that you're going to run and you're not going to be mm. feeling weary. Mm, you know, absolutely. you think about what he did with Moses. He said he never lost a step. Mm -hmm. You know, and so he said they'll walk and not faint. And so we meditate on that word and we keep on chewing on it. We start singing songs with those words. And, and then we find other scriptures to match that. Mm -hmm. yes. It becomes a part of us. It becomes our mantra. Mm -hmm. You know, it becomes the thing that comes out of our mouth. And then before you know it, what you meditate on, you become. Mm -hmm. Brian. I really believe that's prophetic. Okay. But here's going to be our challenge. Come on now. We got 40, 400, over 400 years mm -hmm. that we've been in bondage. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've got over 400 years that we've been oppressed. Mm -hmm. We've got over 400 years that we've had not had our own temple to worship in. Mm -hmm. We've had 400 years of being in a strange con mm -hmm. country. We, we can't pull out our harps and worship. Yeah. So am I going to focus on where I am yeah. and what my experience is? Mm -hmm. Or am I, as you shared, am I going to rise up and hope in God mm -hmm. yeah. that soon this is going to all be behind me? Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you really meditate, you begin to see yourself in that reality before your physical circumstance yeah. actually changes. Amen. Let me tell you, y'all, I was on a job that I absolutely hated. And meditating on these scriptures, yes, in the midst of being ridden up, yes, persecuted, moved around, yes, changed, overlooked, almost just turned backs turned on. I'm getting the worst parts of the job and all that. I'm still meditating on these scriptures. And the Lord gave me new hope. Uh, Absolutely. I'm talking about I completely changed careers. I went from a baker to a fireman. Yeah. <laughs> you know? In the midst of all that. You know? Yeah. And so 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 he'll change you, but you've got to put that on the inside of you. And you and once it changes your mind, I will walk in, I'm gonna tell you that. That was when I, that, that was when I, um, I, I've told y'all before, when I was working at the bank, I knew the people who were in charge mm -hmm. because I watched how they walked. Mm -hmm. They walked different. And I was determined that even though I wouldn't even, I, I had given up the idea of trying to be promoted at that bank. But I walked like a vice president when I walked down the hallway, y'all. You know, I, I was I was the one I was speaking to everybody. I had my suit and my tie on and I was happy and laughing and talking and everything because the Lord had changed my mind. Calling yeah. those things which be not yes. yet. No, they were. In the midst of the situation, I know we're out of time. We are out of time, but Paul said it this way. He said, forgetting what's behind mm -hmm. and reaching 
reach. To, yeah, reach. Training. Yeah. You gotta reach, yeah. y'all. You gotta yeah. reach. Yeah, you gotta. And and so I, I you know I think we can end on that note. And I'm you know. Yeah, that's that's the perfect place to end. Yeah. We're gonna reach into next week. How about that? Yeah. Thank you again for joining us for Living in the Word. This rich, copious word, and we have just just scratched the surface of this list. We talked about meditation. Let's meditate and let's come back together. Uh, but before we do that, I'll see you in the sanctuary. Bye for now. We love y'all. Love y'all.